Hello, my name is Ryan Warden. I'm the Manager of Product Training and Support Services at Oxford University Press. And in this video, I'd like to give you a quick tour of Grove Art Online. Grove Art Online is the foremost scholarly art encyclopedia, which is updated regularly and which covers global art and architecture from prehistory to the present day. It includes peer review articles contributed by over 7,000 scholars from around the world, as well as images, bibliographies, and links to additional resources. Grove Art Online sits on our Oxford Art Online platform, which also includes the Benazit Dictionary of Artists. Here from the Grove Art homepage, you'll see that in the main frame, I have links to a number of featured articles, as well as to updates and ongoing initiatives across the Grove Art project. At the top of the main page, you'll see that the content itself in Grove Art is available via either search or browse. You could browse using one of these subject drop-down menus here in the main bar at the top, browse either by art history, art forms, geography, and so on. Or you could run a search here in the quick search box in the right-hand side of the screen. You'll notice that the quick search box on Grove Art has this drop-down menu where you can specify if you'd like your search results to be limited only to what's within Grove Art Online, or if you'd like to search across Oxford Art Online to also see results from the Benazit Dictionary of Artists. So for example, if I stay within Grove Art Online, I'm going to run a search for Andy Warhol. When you run a search on Grove Art Online, by default, your results will be sorted by relevance. But you'll see here at the top of my results in the sort by dropdown, I have the option to change the way in which my results appear on my screen to sort either by article title, author or editor name, or by publication date. Here on the left-hand side, I have a number of options for applying filters to my search results. Starting at the top, you'll see I have the option to instead perform this search across all Oxford Art Online. I could also modify my search, adding additional terms to my original search if I'd like. And in this dropdown, I can specify where in the article I would like my search term to appear, either within the article title, the heading, the bibliography, etc. Continuing down, I have the option to filter by format, so either by full articles or just by images. Within search and browse results, the format will always be made very clear by the gray box in the upper right-hand corner to indicate whether this search result is an image or a full article, which will also include images within it. Continuing down, I can filter by article type or also by life event. Below this, I'll have the full subject taxonomy made available for me again if I'd like to continue to drill down and browse further into the different subfields. Finally, here at the bottom, I can apply filters by publication date or lastly by availability to see only content that I have full text access to through my institution. Going back to the top of my search results, You'll see that I also have the option to run this search within the three complementary titles that are included as part of your Grove Art subscription. These include the Concise Dictionary of Oxford Art Terms, the Encyclopedia of Aesthetics, and the Oxford Companion to Western Art. If you select this, you'll see that your search term will be run across each of these three resources and be made available for you here on the screen. If you select any of these results, you'll be taken to the full text of this article on the Oxford Reference Platform. Going back to my search terms within Grove Art only, I'm going to select the Andy Warhol article so that you can see how a typical article will appear on the Grove Art site. Here on the article page in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a menu of available options that users will have for saving and sharing this article. Starting on the left-hand side, you can download this article as a PDF. You can save this article to your personal profile. You can cite this article using this button here, which will generate a pop-up right here on your screen. This will allow you to select from this drop-down menu your preferred citation style, and you can copy and paste a full text of this citation directly into your bibliography. Below that, you'll also have the option to export this citation using your preferred reference manager. Continuing down, the final two options in the menu are to either email a link to this article or to share a link to this article on social media. 
Here above the article title, you'll see you can toggle between viewing the full article, which includes the images it contains, or to view only the images that will be included within this article. You'll see here at the top, underneath the article title, I have the author of this article. I also have this article's DOI, or Digital Object Identifier, which will allow users to permanently locate this article online. Next, I'll also have the online publication date. And as we get into the article text itself, you'll see that the images appear within the actual text. If you want to view any of the images large, just select the View Large button here at the bottom. At the bottom, you'll see that I have links to writings related to this article, this article's bibliography, and related articles and external resources here at the bottom. Going back to the top, I'm going to select the personal profile option to show you where users can save content as they go through the site. This will always be located in the far upper right corner under My Profile. All users can create their own personal profile with just an email address and a password. And this is where users will save content and save searches as they move through the site. You'll see that users can also save annotations as they go through the site. All users who create a personal profile will be able to make annotations directly onto the screen and save them to their personal profile if they'd like to come back later and pick up where they stopped reading. A couple of other links here in the main support bar if we go to the Tools and Resources page here at the top, we'll have an overview of some of the subject guides, lesson plans, and timelines that are made available on Grove Art. Clicking into the subject guides, this is where we'll have general overviews of everything from ancient Egypt, Asian art, and fashion. If we select any of these, we'll be given a quick introduction and overview to this topic, as well as as well as a full list of available articles and biographies that can be found within Grove Art. Underneath the overviews, we also have a number of specialized guides, including everything from British visual satire from the 18th to 20th centuries, American women photographers, and painters in post-war New York City. Going back to the top to the main support bar, the final page I'd like to show you is the customer services page. This is where you can go to find services and information on things such as downloading MARC records, pulling monthly institutional usage reports, and accessing free promotional tools. You'll also see under the customer services page that we have links to our FAQ and help pages. The help page on GrowVart Online will include a step-by-step -step overview of some of the most basic things that users will need for navigating the site everything from logging on to running a search to creating a personal account. We will have text guidance along with a number of screenshots to show them exactly what the next step will be. If you have any additional questions as you navigate through the site, please contact us using the contact information that's available here, again, under Customer Services.